Remember that molar mass is the factor we use to convert how much stuff we have to how many particles we have. This works well for solids and liquids, but not so well for gases, the mass of which is not easily measured. However, if only we knew the volume of one mole of gas, we could relate the volumes of gases and the numbers of molecules in the sample. So the big question for this lab is what is the volume of one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure? For this procedure, you need a large graduated cylinder, a gas measuring tube, a length of magnesium, a length of copper wire, a one-hole stopper that will fit in the gas measuring tube, distilled water, and six molar hydrochloric acid. From the material safety data sheet, we know that hydrochloric acid is a clear solution that has a pretty distinct chlorine odor. Of course, you are going to do everything you can to avoid inhaling this chemical as it is toxic when breathed in and ingested. Hydrochloric acid is corrosive to pretty much any body tissue, so be very careful when handling it. You will take your gas measuring tube to the fume hood to collect your hydrochloric acid. Take a short length of magnesium ribbon and measure it to the nearest tenth of a millimeter. Fold that magnesium ribbon in half a few times. Then wrap the copper wire around the folded magnesium to form sort of a cage around the magnesium. This will be used to keep the magnesium in the acid and keep it from floating away as it reacts. This works because the magnesium will react with hydrochloric acid, but the copper will not. Then thread the copper wire through the hole in the stopper and bend it down a small bit to hold it in place. You want the wire to hold in the stopper without slipping either up or down. In the fume hood, add about 10 milliliters of 6 molar hydrochloric acid to the gas measuring tube. It is important to be aware of what is going on around you. There are other people carrying glass and acid, so be careful when you're moving back and forth. Back at your lab station, use a squirt bottle to very slowly and very carefully add a layer of distilled water on top of the acid. Tilt the gas measuring tube at an angle and gently squeeze the water so it flows down the side of the tube. Fill the tube all the way to the top with distilled water. Cap the end of your gas measuring tube with your stopper. You do not want any air bubbles anywhere inside your tube. You will probably have a little bit of water overflow at the very top, but that's okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, ignore the totally distorted hand while you invert the gas measuring tube into your graduated cylinder filled with water. Look closely at the tube and you will be able to see the liquids moving. Hydrochloric acid is more dense than water, so it will make its way down to the other end of the tube. This is where it will begin to react with the magnesium metal, and gas will begin collecting in the top of the tube. When the magnesium is completely reacted, you will read the volume of the gas. Now this is going to change depending on where you hold the tube. Pull the tube out of the water a little bit, and at different levels, you will get different readings. This happens because you are changing the pressure inside the tube, and therefore changing the volume of the gas inside the tube. Adjust the height of the tube so that the water level inside the tube is even with the water level in the graduated cylinder. This allows the pressure of the gas mixture inside the tube to equalize with the pressure of the room. Once you have your volume measurement, you can clean up. The contents of the tube can go down the drain. Rinse the copper wire and the stopper very well, and place the copper in the beaker on the demonstration table. Be sure to wash your hands before you're leaving, just in case there's any acid left on them. This is the data you need for this lab. The mass of one meter of magnesium ribbon will be given to you in the lab. You will measure the length of magnesium ribbon that was used, and the volume of the gas collected. There will be a lab quest on the front desk that will be measuring the room temperature and the pressure throughout the lab. Be sure to record these when you measure the volume. Once you know the room temperature, you will also need to determine the vapor pressure of water for that particular temperature. There will be a chart on the board in the room when we do this lab. So before coming to lab, you need to have a few things set up in your lab notebook. You need the title, the question, and the variables, a general procedure of what you're going to do along with any safety notes that you need to be aware of, and your data table should be set up before you begin.